Well, Miss Courtney Dillon and Eric Metis, my love. He, hello, <laughs> hi everyone. Um, he says, hi mom. And he's, he's bringing, um, he's walking in today and well, you can introduce who we're talking to and then I'll tell you who's, well, what's going on. Well, we're doing Bonnie and Clyde. Fascinating story. I just watched a movie about them. So I thought, well, oh, let's talk to him. He, um, not everything you see in the movie is true. Yeah. But uh, of course, but they walked in uh, right before we got in because I've been asking to talk to them and talked to them a little last night. And they're actually, there's a group of about five, but the two of them, um, Bonnie and Clyde are standing in the front, but they say that they, um, uh, I'll channel each of them individually. So they've given me permission to do so. Uh, but they said that they like to travel with their group. Oh, so, that's great. Well, thank you yeah. so much for agreeing to talk to us. Uh, you know, we want to clear up any misconceptions, et cetera, et cetera. Just learn from you both from a spiritual aspect, et cetera. So I guess the first thing I would like to know is, can each of you guys describe your childhood? As children, what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you imagine being married, having a family? I mean, uh, I guess mm. let's start with Clyde. Or no, ladies first, Bonnie. <laughs> Yeah, he was going like that. He was pointing over to Bonnie. They really are, and I'll just say this, they really are um, what you would describe as soulmates. Okay. Um, they keep coming back together. So this is like a repeated theme. And, and I've we've seen other lifetimes. I should have worn this sweater because I get hot when I channel. But, um, you know, they show me other lifetimes that they've had together. And we can talk about those today too. So she, um, let's see, how was her childhood? difficult she grew up really poor mm. um, I'm seeing a mother looks like her father um, she's showing me her father met her when she crossed over so it looks like her father died when she was young I'm seeing that he must have died of some type of heart issue because he has a heart problem and then he falls to the ground okay so that looks like about five four or five years old oh gosh um her mom so she was born in, um, I'm seeing like kind of rural Texas, it looks like they're showing me there's not a lot around. And her mom quickly, um, I guess she moves back in with like family. So it looks like uh, very difficult, mm. poor, and, you know, lots of just trying to survive kind of that sort of childhood. Okay, what about uh, Clyde? What about your childhood? Um, <laughs> he, he has a big smile. He says, thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to speak, ma'am. Oh, He's cool. very polite. Yeah. My childhood was very difficult. Um, so he's been talking about how he came to crime as kind of like, there was no way else for them to have food or um, enough, you know, and just enough stuff. So they would have to steal food. They would have to, um, he has a big family. There's like a ton of people. Hmm. Um, he has a huge, he has a, he has a mother and father, but he's showing me, a, I think there's about six or seven brothers and sisters. It looks like, hmm. um, a lot huge of family, yeah. a lot of mouths to feed and they, they weren't, they didn't have any money. So there were periods of time when he didn't have he's showing me like um they got into a home but it was a really just very uh basic home but there was a, even a period of time that they didn't have a home they were like camping or something oh, like that yeah so very very difficult um he loves both of his parents very much and they were kind to him and loving but it was the kind of, I, it looks like both of them were very much in, in childhood in like survival mode. They didn't have a lot of resources or food, you know, things like that. He in particular was always stealing food. That's how he first originally started his yeah. life of crime was stealing. Um, he's, <laughs> I see it. A, 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 it's kind of funny, but he's a little kid and there's a chicken pen and he's like stealing a chicken. 
Oh, okay. And um, different things like that was how he got started. So, so what did you guys both want to do? I mean, did you have, what did you dream about being um, growing up to become, if, if at um, all? She shows me, she's a little quieter, but she will talk. <clears throat> She has ambitions to take photographs, be a writer. Oh. But she does like being in the spotlight in some way. Mm. Um, <laughs> although the way she found stardom is not the way she anticipated. No. What about you, Clyde? What did you want to be when you grew up? He says, frankly, ma'am, I didn't have time to think about what I wanted to be. He just had to survive. That's it. Yeah. He, from the very beginning, he was just trying to get enough to eat for his family and that kind of thing. I mean, it was just very, very poor. Very poor. Right. Yeah. Now, here's another one. We've got 30 questions. Well, 29 plus. I'm sure I'll throw them up. How did Clyde persuade Bonnie to join him? Clyde, how did you persuade Bonnie to join you? in this life of crime because he was married apparently to another to another man at the time i didn't know that oh is that true she agrees yeah she's showing okay. me a, she, two wedding rings it's just symbolic but she okay. has but they were never formally married although she, oh. the second one represents their soulmate relationship because they are soulmates okay um it's, he's, it's not going to be confusing because you guys you guys have an advanced group that listens to this he says okay um <clears throat> when i when you asked that question the first thing i heard was love at first sight okay it was a reunion it was a reconnection it was love at first sight she actually didn't need convincing oh, okay she knew she, she just wanted to be with him yeah yeah she just wanted to be with me and she loved me and I loved her. And how we did everything lifetimes, together. How many lifetimes have you had together? 72. Oh, wow, that came out quick. All right, um, I would like to ask who made it, which one of you made the decisions and were more in charge of the relationship in the relationship? <laughs> He's cute. He says, she wears the pants in the family, ma'am. Oh, okay. But in terms of their, um, life of crime he calls it he was the one that was like more strategically planning where they were going to go it okay. looks like i don't fully get this but he shows me like sort of the map of the country where they went and they sort of like did they had a plan you know they had a plan and they would go kind of like almost in a circle but that not quite you know they had to throw people off but they would kind of go what looks like a circle Okay. To, you know so he was a mastermind but she like in the relationship was the you know she, she can hold her own with me ma'am there we go that's what i was wondering mm -hmm. it seems that clyde was sexually assaulted while in prison before he went on a crime spree is that true yes this is true mm. this is <clears throat> He's okay to talk about it now, but this was very, this was very, very difficult oh, for him. Yeah, of uh, multiple times, uh, he was. This looks like in prison, um, and he says he got the man who did it. It looks like he killed him. It looks like okay, uh -huh. <clears throat> and um, this. Event, these events changed me for the worse. I became a criminal. Oh yeah. How old were you when with the first sexual assault? He looks eight, eight, 18. I'm seeing the word or number 18. Okay. Okay. So apparently Clyde, you swore you would die before you ever went, ever went back to jail. Uh, was there a car, was there some sort of karmic lesson in all that, that experience? If you call karma not wanting to return to those who hurt you, yes. Okay. All right. So it looked to me uh, when he's showing me pictures, and he's also speaking, but when he's showing me pictures, I'm seeing in prison just this. It, it was obviously the sexual abuse would be horrible enough, 
but there was a lot of, it feels like very horrible kind of torture, um, very violent against him. He, it really changed him. Yeah. And, you know, he, he fulfilled it. He kept his promise. He didn't, he was in and out for a while and then he died before he went back. It looks yeah. like, yeah. yeah. He oh, boy. just wasn't willing to do that. Yeah. So Bonnie, did you really have a limp? If so, what really caused it? Uh, yeah, she does have a limp on her right leg. Okay. Um, an accident. There's a car accident. Okay. And the car rolls over, but there's, it's not like the roll, it rolls over on her so much as what happens. I don't understand. Just one second. Oh, there's gasoline or fluids of sometimes from the car. Like oh, okay. it, it hurts her, it burns her leg and she is permanently disabled. Oh, she gosh. almost dies. It looks like, um, it's very, I'm sorry, it's a little graphic, but it's like skin really kind of coming oh, off oh. and you can see it's like a very, very deep wound. Was it a burn? It's a burn, yeah, but it, you can even see parts of the bone when you I mean, look like at flame, it. it. It caught fire. Her leg yeah, her leg cut, catches fire and it burns, oh, and and it's she's never the same after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see, um, like almost, um, I I got it. You can almost see into the um, bone, like you can see the bone. I know what is that? It sounds really graphic, but yeah, after that. Um, she's never the same and never really fully gets better before they die. Actually, she's oh. has health problems. Yeah. So under, after that. that part of your contract, karmic, et cetera. I mean, why did that occur to you? Um, yes. Part of her contract uh, to experience, you know, they knew it's funny. They're showing me a picture of Romeo and Juliet. And I'm like, what does that mean? And they, they knew they were going to die young mm. and they knew that they were going to die together. That's just kind of like how it was going to go. Right. Um, in whatever way, like that, that was it. They came in as souls. They left as souls together. Okay. Wow. And um, this injury with her leg was the beginning of the end. You could call it karmic. She can understand past lives okay. that led to this event. Did she understand, also, wait, she understand it stood at the time or now? She no, no, oh, yeah, no, okay. no, 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 yeah. now from, from, from her vantage point. Right. Um, it's funny. I'm laughing because they have this, there's five of them. And we can talk to the other ones if you want, but there's five of them. They're sitting around at this table and Eric's sitting with them and they have cigarettes and cigars. And then, I mean, some moonshine. Oh boy. I was just laughing. Yeah. And she was saying, well, she'll tell you more about this if you want to sit down with her with, you know, and drink some moonshine. So that's funny. So yeah. who are these people? Are they relatives or are they fellow criminals? Admit part of the gang. So okay, okay. Yeah, part of the gang. So you know us now as Bonnie and Clyde, but we were again. Okay. So it's it's uh hold on a second. Let me get to know him. Clyde's brother. Okay. okay. Clyde's brother's wife. Okay. Yes. Hi. And um, two more uh, members of the gang. So it looks like, wait, no, is that right? One more member, excuse me. So there's five total. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, Bonnie, did you ever shoot a gun at someone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you kill them? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I did. Uh, all right. Was uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, was your relationship really based on love or was it all about monetary gain? I think I know the answer to that one. It was love probably. Yeah. True love. Okay. True love. They loved each other and still, still love each other very much. Wow. Um, I, they, they got mixed up with the, the wrong crowd in this lifetime. Well, they were kind of the wrong crowd. <laughs> He's making a joke, but um yes they were the wrong crowd but when you can understand you know they want us to kind of think about this like when you understand that a life of crime is the origins of a life of crime is often poverty 
Yeah, of course. It gives you a different perspective. I understand that. Did the, mm -hmm. the, the robberies, uh, robberies you committed get in the way of your original attraction with, to each other? I mean, how did that affect your relationship with the robberies, I guess? No, <laughs> no, they, they were loved each other through and through till the end, she says. Um, uh, the only thing that I'm hearing from him is that, um, you know, when you murder a person, you might feel something at the beginning. Yeah. But after a while, it just becomes something that you do as part of what you do. Like you're just hardened to it. Oh, wow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, did you ever have any remorse? Killing yeah. And robbing? I had remorse in the fact that I wish it, ha it didn't happen. Who is talking? Clyde? Uh, Clyde. Okay. Me. He talks more. She doesn't oh, talk yeah. quite as much. Um, I mean, she will, she will talk, but not yeah. quite as much, but he says he has remorse in, in so much. I, I wish it hadn't happened. However, my time in the prison system left me hardened. Yeah. It was like, it, it? he, yeah, there's a revenge element here. Actually, yeah. there's a revenge element and especially, um, law enforcement. He's yeah. got it kind of out for the prison system and law enforcement because of he what he feels he was not adequately protected in prison. I mean, he can see yeah. this is how he felt when he was alive. He can see the broader yeah. picture now, if that makes sense. Yes. OK, mm -hmm. so was uh, did uh, were you beaten or tortured or mistreated by law enforcement? Yes, oh, it looks like within the the um, warden in the jail that yeah. he was in Texas. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of rural Texas. I'm not that, you know more about Texas than I do, um, but he's showing me a, a map of Texas, kind of like in the middle, it's in, there's a prison there. That's the prison he's in. And he shows me that the warden was very cruel and mean and um, corrupt actually. Could be bribed, but it was a really problematic, um, system mm. and also very abusive. The sexual abuse at all from him? Not, not, no. The sexual abuse was a fellow inmate or, okay. uh -huh. and, but it was multiple, multiple time, uh, multiple instances of sexual abuse. Oh gosh. All right. How do you feel about being folk heroes? I mean, especially, you know, people were like, Bonnie and Clyde. It was like the, the contemporary Robin Hood. Although you didn't even give to the poor, I don't think. You just kept it. No, they didn't, they didn't give to the poor. Um, they're laughing a little bit. They they're, have this kind of smirk and they're su surprising, but also um, they, you know, she was very, she's very kind of elegant in her way. <laughs> Okay. Um, she, if she had gone the, what he calls the right direction, she would have made her way into writing or film or photography, you know, something artistic, yeah. right? Yeah. They both liked the spotlight a little bit. Oh yeah. I bet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so did, did, did you both have a soul contract for all of this? I think we might have said something about that, but. Yes and no. And yeah, and yet what what was the soul contract too? And this okay. in that lifetime and why? Yeah, they're explaining. They're saying they they wanted excitement, um, fame, but they but they had some choices to make. They didn't. It was like I'm not necessarily part of the contract that they come in and they. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to offend them, but that they kill a bunch of people. You know it, what? It wasn't necessarily that they made they had free will choice, yeah. but they did come in to reunite as soulmates. I mean, really, I mean, they're soulmates and work together, work with each other very strongly. Um, I'm also seeing them on a battlefield uh, in battle together, like comrades in battle. So and they're two men, so, but they're very close 
friends is also right. soulmates. So it's just like this kind of relationship, um, this kind of bond is what keeps them together. She didn't necessarily, he, it looks like he sort of signed up for a life of crime in some ways. She didn't necessarily do that. It's just that she needed to be with him. Yeah. And free will gave her that choice. Mm -hmm. All right, so and she wasn't thing. ever going to let him down. Yeah. Now, I know you gave money to like Bonnie's mom, et cetera. I mean, but eventually you had so much money, right? Or did you? And, and uh, didn't she ever? No, they're saying money? they didn't have her have that much money. Oh, really? Well, it's That's interesting. Good. They had some money, but also... <laughs> Once you're famous, and they give it smiles, you can't be seen in public and you can't really go spend it and spend it. I mean, so. So what happened to all the, that you, I mean, how much money do you think you stole during your life as Bonnie and Clyde? Hmm. In those Up, dollars. Upwards of, dollars, upwards of several thousand dollars. Okay. He's like, between like, it looks like, 20 to 30 but that's looks like a you know quite a bit of money given yeah. the time period um it was never about the money it's so I, interesting I figured. but what this you is do not about them? the money this is about exacting revenge on those who hurt me yeah hmm. but what, what happened to the money what'd you do with it what'd you spend uh, it on etc um <laughs> ammunition weapons oh i bet yeah weapons yeah. yeah yeah um looks like he did like to drink she not so much she didn't drink quite as much but he okay. um alcohol cigarettes um hideouts locations yeah hotels oh. supplies clothing food okay mm -hmm. uh all right so did you get any uh, that last day did you get any sense that an ambush was coming? You know, it's funny, even before you asked the question, I just had this intuitive feeling because he's showing me as if he's him that something's going to happen today. Yeah. Like, so he got a sense. Yeah, yeah. He had a clear, um, he said, calls it sixth sense is what you like to call it, okay. that something was going to happen. But they knew um, their death. She's smiling right now. She says, our death was a foregone conclusion. They knew that they were yeah. going to die. They were both unwilling to go to prison. They just wouldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. They were going to go. It was like um, the fire that burns really bright. He said, it's not necessarily positive, but it's, it burns out really. It's like a, what is it called? Sparkler. That's what he's showing me. Yeah. You know, like a sparkler hot just burns really quickly that's them because they both died really young. I mean, they look not much older than 20 years old. Wow. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's like the twin towers people, the choice is do I burn or do I jump to my death? So it's almost like that. Um, yeah. They, they knew they both yeah. knew what and they were going to die together. What were your last thoughts as humans right before the ambush? And um. yeah. Uh, she says she looks over at him or she's sitting right here. He's sitting right here in the car and she looks over at him and thinks, I love you. This is the end. Wow. Okay. What did you think, Clyde? This is the end. <laughs> okay. Well, we're all on the same page. So yeah. What were your last actual words together? The, the, the last conversation you had before the ambush, not not when you already were being ambushed, but before we were driving down that road. What were y'all talking about? Um, he shows me like they didn't actually. Well, this is they were quiet a lot when they drove okay. together. Yeah. Uh, when when the it, for some reason, and I don't. We'd have to under. I'd have to look at the history or something because I don't get this totally. But there's a gang of them for most of the time, right? right. And then at the very end, it's just the two of them. So I don't know exactly what happened to the gang, but it feels like the gang got broken up or something along the way. But what he shows me is that they would just, they could be together in perfect silence. Okay. Well, one of uh, was, uh, well, he wasn't asleep, he was driving, but was Bonnie asleep? Were you asleep? 
No, she was awake. She also is very intuitive. They both had a sense that the, they didn't know necessarily that it was that day, but they both had a sense that their time had come to an end. Her leg especially was really painful, oh. extremely painful. And it was causing pain. I mean, I, I, I'm honestly surprised she lived through this, but it was causing pain in other um, parts of her body. Oh gosh. It was, you know, honestly, if she had kept, if she had stayed alive past this ambush, it would have been infected. Like it, she yeah. was already going to cross over. Die from that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. After you died, how do you, did you feel about people trying to get souvenirs off of your body? Um, he did. Oh my gosh. He's, oh, it's awful. Somebody's like trying to, um, this is, I'm just going to say it like take his finger. Oh, like, it off? Yeah. Like, oh like, cut it off to keep the thing. I'm sorry. It's so disturbing. I don't want to say it to everybody, but like, I see it. And so that one <laughs> didn't bother him actually. Um, so what was there a ring on the finger that they wanted? Yeah, they wanted, I guess it's either the trigger finger. Cause I can see them, somebody oh, trying to get the, they wanted the, the you know, like the trigger finger. Oh and then God. they wanted the rings. People, oh, they don't have key. rings, but why does, she, oh, she has a ring. I guess the rings from her first Husband. Yeah, that's okay. Question. Why was yeah? Because it doesn't. She that. doesn't have a wedding ring from him, but she would just. She just always wore this ring. It looks yeah, like. Yeah. Why? That's my actually my next question. Why was Bonnie still wearing her wedding ring from Roy when she died? When she died, even though she had been with Clyde since 1930. Uh, fewer questions in that day. If you're with a man, oh. you should wear a ring. Oh, that makes sense. She doesn't, she's not one to care about conventions. I mean, yeah. obviously, <laughs> yeah. laughing because he's like, no, well, know, obviously. But she's not one to care about conventions. She's much more um, like of a, a bohemian type of personality or lifestyle. She much more can get on board with how people are able to live these days. But in that time, you're with a man, you wear a ring. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, Bonnie, any regrets about not escaping before the ambush when actually I'm insinuating that there was a chance that you still could? Is that true? That you had no, to no regrets. She and they they wanted to leave together. Okay. Is and there there's no regrets that was said about either of you that is in, in the history books that is incorrect? Yes, there. It looks like, you know, she actually has a softer side and a really kind of curious and artistic and, um, you know, she'd be the kind that would be in the world today and she'd be making art or selling her art or, you know, doing something very creative. Yeah. And it feels like she did like being in the public. She has a, she has a very like, um, party side or a saucy side too but she feels to me like she would like people didn't get to see this part of her very yeah. much um <laughs> this is funny this is very minute but the picture of her smoking a cigar is inaccurate she doesn't oh, really? really she just was doing it for the photo but then everybody thought she smoked cigars but oh. she actually she smokes cigarettes yeah. Um, and she's been smoking, um, there's been cigarettes on the table that, that are available, but you know, she didn't, she doesn't smoke cigars. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, did things turn out or oh, anything else incorrect before I go on any major things? No, they kind of like the myth of them. They kind okay. of like it. Yeah. You must stay mysterious. Yeah. Did turn out how they were supposed to, or would you do anything different if you could do everything again? Well, he says, um, as with any life of crime, when people die, there is, he's showing me like a piggy bank and how, you know, like if you, you, you know, you kill someone or do something really bad, there's, it's like a deposit is made that you will eventually have to. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of karmic debt. 
Yeah. So he can see that that is not that pleasant. Mm. However, that said, they would do it all over. They would do, they would go out together again. Okay. They would leave earth together. And then not necessarily this, I mean, when they take me back and I go like that, because when they move into somebody's past lives, they take me this direction. Okay. Um, they have, they seem to come in together and they seem to leave together. Wow. That's just the way they do it. Okay. Bonnie, were you bothered that your family would not let you be buried next to Clyde? Um, from a human perspective, this is important. I would prefer to be buried by my soulmate, but when you're outside of her body, you can see the, it like almost doesn't matter. No. Does that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But now yeah. they've passed into the non-physical. They don't really have negative feelings about that. No. Way. Yeah, he doesn't. She doesn't either. But it seems logical that they would, are they buried? Did they fix that or change that? Because I see them together now. So I don't know if that got... Maybe there's know. some change that's been happened there. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Bonnie and Clyde, each of you, one at a time. Bonnie, uh, you start first. Can you describe what happened right after you were shot? Did you die right away, for example? Yes, right away. I mean, okay. It looks instant. Okay. Um, Clyde dies instantly. I see them move up toward yeah. the, the light. Yeah. Uh, it looks like um, Bonnie is met by her uh, father. Okay. And Clyde is met by, I feel like he lost um, a brother because uh, he has this huge family. I feel like uh, one of the children in the family, yes, is that correct? Yes. Okay. One of the children in the family died early. So he's met by his brother and other family members. She's okay. met by her father, but they are together. They're, st they're okay. still together. Yeah. All right. Anything special about your transition? Is it the usual white light thing and meet meeting the people that you just described? Or uh, it looks like there's like a pull and there is white light. And I feel this is going to sound strange, but they're laughing. They're like laughing because they're looking around and like, well, that was kind of an that was a crazy life. Oh like it God. was. It was like wow that was an intense you know whatever 20 25 years they, wow. I mean, they just came in and they really had a very very intense short yeah, sparkler light yeah, there you go uh did you think when you were alive do you think that you would if, when you died go to hell for your crimes did you believe that um he smiled he said most probably ma'am <laughs> what did what what sort of religious beliefs if any did you have um, I was taught to believe in Jesus and God, uh, but it feels like he believed, but did, it didn't stick. Is what I'm hearing. It didn't, <laughs> didn't stick. <laughs> what about you, Bonnie? What about your religious beliefs? Um, I believe in God, but didn't think about it much. Okay. What about Roy? Did you meet Roy? Uh, after you cross over, Bonnie? Yes. Yes. How did that go? Um, I'm sorry, some of those statements are funny, as well as can be expected. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, have you incarnated either of you? Um, getting ready to, oh. getting ready to, but they're going to come together. Of course. Well, what's that mm -hmm. life going to be like? What you got planned? Let's brace ourselves. <laughs> um, I'm laughing because he says much, much calmer, a lot less trouble. Okay. What, uh, what do you plan to be as occupations, either of you? Or do you know? Um, he, he's, this guy's, he's funny. Uh, he says a doctor. He's going to help people this life. Oh, my God. I had a feeling that you could say that. Bonnie, what about yeah. you? To be a nur his nurse or a fellow doctor. <laughs> He said, she says a doctor also. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're um, going to, they want to come back and help people. I mean, they're, you know, part of the untangling okay. of the mess they created. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
can you describe, I know you talked about being soldiers together, comrades on the battlefield. Can you share another life that most influenced your lives as Bonnie and Clyde? Mm -hmm. um, yes, they were in, um, uh, there's, I'm seeing Southeast Asia and there's a, a little boy and a little girl, um, brother and sister, and they were living, this is actually like a very, very happy, peaceful life. Um, I'm like, well, what made you come in and do all this? Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, poverty. Okay. You gave me an answer. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, there so we yeah. And it, there's lots of, they were romantically um, together. They were married. They have been brothers. They have been comrades. They have been brother and sister pretty much, you know, 72 times. Yeah. It looks like any most configurations you can think of, but soulmates. Okay. Uh, Bonnie, what were you here to learn and what were you here to teach oh. that life, this lifetime? Um, <clears throat> I was here to learn patience, which is the same. She didn't necessarily learn it. Um, <laughs> That's a hard one. Yeah. And to teach, well, so this is interesting. She shows me like um, a road and it can split one way or the other. Mm -hmm. If she had gone on the road that is like the soul path for her, even though this is how it went, if she had gone on the road that's like the soul path, then it would have kind of been about bringing her art to the world, oh. like the creation of beauty, that kind of thing. So basically, but the free will nudged her to be with her soulmate. Yes, it did. And it nudged her in a direction that some would view as not positive. So, okay. Clyde, what about you? What were you here to learn? And what were you, what were you here to teach that lifetime? Um, <laughs> sorry. He says not much of a teacher. <clears throat> I was here to learn tolerance, compassion, patience. Okay, did you accomplish any of those? No, ma'am. Okay, next time as a doctor, <laughs> it could be very important. Mm -hmm. Now, did Bonnie and or Claude create havoc to create a better world? I mean, did, did, what was the effect of your lifetime on the collective as a way to break from the system? But they mm. turned into They the said the myth of them you know there's some energy in the myth of them right because it feels like very much not that they were not and they both agree with this they're not necessarily like trying to like feed the poor and steal from the rich or do anything very extremely yeah. noble like that mm -hmm. but it's like the myth of them of you know it's like people with really nothing that can become famous is maybe not the best way, but that can become, you know, there's a lot of, they have a ton of notoriety. They're, they're yeah. all over the newspapers. I can see them on like thousands of newspapers all over the country. Yeah. I mean, people were focused on them. Yeah. And it's just like, you can do anything. Be maybe not the West. Or you can be. Anything. Yeah. But maybe not the best way to go about it. No. Well, was there any um, part of this thing, your life, to influence the corruption and the inequity in the prison system and the justice system? Yes, ma'am. That was a big part of my mission. Good. And uh, did you accomplish that at all? I mean, did it? Yes, ma'am. Well, yes, because he shows me uh, a spotlight. Yeah. And and it seems like there's more. There's more spotlight on it now but he shows me a spotlight and it did shine on this system as a result of his you know yeah crime we have a long way to go and mm -hmm. others like jesse james and you know people like you probably also tried to chip away at that that corruption and inequity etc so and the abuse yeah and poverty makes men do bad things well yeah you have to eat it's very difficult i'm not excusing it but it's certainly an explanation right he said he, so he says poverty makes men do bad things. and he shows me you know if you 
he's just as a, a little kid, like stealing to eat. And that becomes your way of life very quickly, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, you know, no other life. Anything else you want to share before we close? Any final messages, Bonnie? Any final messages, Clyde? Um, yes, Clyde has a message and then Bonnie will have a, sh a short closing message. For those in poverty, choose a better way. Mm. Because there will be people who see this who feel hopeless about their situation, about not having enough to eat. Um, choose a better way. A better way is available to you. And also he wants me to express that he truly understands what so many people in this country and in the world right now are going through feeling like they don't have enough yeah. to eat and because that's really, truly a huge, huge problem right now. Yes, it is. But, you know, I think maybe I'm wrong. I think there are more resources available to the poor now than there were during your time. Is there or is that not true? Is it just wishful thinking on my part? Yes, some. But it feels like he's showing me that, you know, people in really extreme poverty don't necessarily feel like they have access to their resource those yeah. resources they don't know and what they don't know what they exactly um so he's saying yes there are some more systems in place to assist people in times of great need however this is about understanding to choose uh, it's like he wants us to to know that we can choose a path that's um, even when it seems dire to choose a honest path that feels like important. And I think all of us in the world need to reach out to the, the, the very poor that do not even know the assets and resources available to them. Bonnie, what about you? What, what would you like to say? Um, in um, for those who desire to write or to create art, she she wants people to follow this path because it feels like that's her real calling her real soul mission is which is funny i mean you know sometimes these what they are and the, what they were shown are contrasting but yeah. it's a real soul mission um if you have a desire to create create with your whole heart mm, mm. Nice. are you willing to if people call upon you the artists uh to help them most most definitely, she will. What um, she'd love to do that. Awesome. Clyde, what do you do? What What is your life in the He's, life, he's life showing me that his main work right now would be to help those in poverty yeah. and those who are watching this who are in the prison system, because there will be some, because he's going to help this reach uh, far and wide. So, oh, so he wants to assist those who feel hopeless in the prison system and those who are in extreme or, you know, any kind of poverty. It doesn't necessarily need to be extreme, but if you feel like you don't have enough resources, um, he, you can ask him to help you. Yeah. And don't allow people to abuse you. I mean, really use a bath gel, not soap is all I can say, prisoners. All right, that's gonna go over everybody's head, hopefully. <laughs> hey, Eric, do He's you have laughing. questions? Um, no, he doesn't have any questions, but he's saying um, he's smiling because he thinks like this was this was good. He's got them all together. It. Awesome. Yeah, I was Courtney like Dylan this. was on. You guys yeah. check her out at CourtneyDillon.com, which we'll put in the description box. And also check out ChillingEric.com, Eric with a K and AtlantisScalar.com if you want scalar energy healing mm -hmm. and check out the two YouTubes of those. Please subscribe hit the notification bell. And if you really enjoyed this, hit the like button too. Share with your friends as well. Love you all. Love you, Eric. Love you, Courtney. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.